Hey everyone! Welcome to the first lesson of our brand new tutorial series, the Arduino Uno R4 Minima Ultimate Training Course. This is Joe Edgo from Education is Life. So, what can you expect from this course? Well, buckle up because I'll be taking you from absolute beginner to Arduino master. In this series, you'll learn how to work with a bunch of sensors like ultrasonic, gas and smoke, flame, uh, vibration, accelerometer and gyroscope, photoresistor, potentiometer, IR obstacle avoidance, capacitive soil moisture, raindrop detection, temperature, humidity and pressure, PIR motion, pulse oximeter and heart rate, real-time clock, touch, IR speed module, joystick, and time-of-flight micro LiDAR distance sensor. You'll learn how to work with different displays like RGB LED, traffic light, OLED display, and a 16x2 I2C LCD display. We'll work with a couple of actuators like TT motors, servo, centrifugal pump, passive buzzer, and relay. And finally, we'll integrate different IoT communication modules such as the ESP01 Wi-Fi module and the JDY31 Bluetooth module to support several of our IoT projects to be made. Now, before we embark on this exciting journey, a special shout out to Sun Founder, our sponsor and the brain behind this ultimate sensor kit with original Arduino Uno R4 Minima. So, if you wish to follow along with this course, it is best that you and I have the same materials to work with. So, I encourage you to please check this one out. You'll find this on Amazon as well as on the Sun Founder's official website. The paid link is in the description below. Also, I'd like to point out that this course is made for everyone. It doesn't matter if you've never worked with Arduino before or have been building things for quite a long time. By the end of this series, you'll be able to write code and build your own Arduino IoT projects with ease. So, in today's lesson, you'll learn the basics of the Arduino Uno R4 Minima, identify how it differs from its predecessor, the Uno R3, which came out over a decade ago. You'll also learn how to install and set up the Arduino IDE to support your new Uno board. And finally, we'll upload a simple test program to see if our board works. So, let's begin. The Arduino Uno R4 is the fourth revision of the popular Arduino Uno microcontroller board, and it has several improvements. The new Uno R4 board comes in two versions. The lightweight Arduino Uno R4 Minima, that's the one that we're going to use for this course, and the full-fledged Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi. Although both are identical form factors, the Uno R4 Wi-Fi has an obvious built-in 12x8 LED matrix and an ESP32S3 offering onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities. While both versions are powerful, they serve different purposes. So, if you're just looking for enhanced capabilities and compatibility with the previous Uno R3 board, then the Arduino Uno R4 Minima is a good fit. However, the Uno R4 Wi-Fi is a great choice if you want to jump right into the Internet of Things. So now, what's the major improvement of this new Uno R4 Minima as compared to its predecessor, the Uno R3? Well, the biggest improvement is the microcontroller. While the Uno R3 board uses the Atmega 328P, an 8-bit AVR RISC-based microcontroller, the new Uno R4 is based on the Renesas RA4M1 microcontroller featuring a 32-bit ARM Cortex-M4 microprocessor. This is the first UNO board that uses a 32-bit architecture. It now comes with a clock speed of 48 MHz, which is three times faster than that of the R3. 256 KB of flash memory, this is eight times bigger in terms of the program size that can be uploaded. And it has 32 kilobytes of static RAM, 16 times bigger in terms of memory capacity for program execution. And with its enhanced thermal design, the Uno R4 board can be powered up to 24 volts. Another noticeable difference is the use of this USB-C port in replacement of the bulky USB-B port. There are several other improvements that I'll be explaining as we go along with this course. 
although these changes are very good, but the best thing about this new Arduino Uno R4 board is that there are several things that stay the same from the previous design. The Uno R4 preserves the standard form factor which means it can fit any shield that you already have in your previous version. The new Uno R4 still operates at 5 volts for backward compatibility. Software compatibility was also a top concern for Arduino. That's why most code libraries and examples that work with the R3 should work with the new R4 without any problems. All of these that remain unchanged are very important because the Arduino Uno R3 has been the most famous and widely used of all the Arduino boards for over a decade. Just like the Uno R3 board, the Uno R4 Minima provides users with access to a wide range of pins and many of these pins have multiple functionalities that will be discussed in detail in the upcoming lessons of this course. The Uno R4 Minima has a total of 14 digital pins from D0 to D13, which can be configured as either inputs or outputs, though some of them serve another purpose. D0 and D1 are used for UART, Receive and Transmit respectively. It can be used for communication between an Arduino board and a computer, another microcontroller board, or with other devices such as GPS module or RFID module. D2 and D3 are used for interrupt, so that the processor can respond quickly to an external event. D3, D5, D6, D9, D10, and D11 can be used for pulse width modulation or PWM, which can be used for controlling servos, speed controllers, or LED dimming effect. It also supports SPI or Serial Peripheral Interface via D10 to D13, which can be used by Arduino for communicating with one or more peripheral devices quickly over short distances. Same as with the previous Uno, D13 is also connected to the board's built-in LED. The Uno R4 Minima has one inter-integrated circuit or I2C bus which is marked with the pins SDA and SCL. This is useful when communicating with several compatible devices like an I2C LCD display. On the other side of the board, the Uno R4 Minima offers six analog input pins, A0 to A5, each capable of reading data from analog sensors up to 14-bit resolution. Note that the previous version only supports 10-bit resolution. Additional design improvement is that pin 0 is also a DAC pin or digital to analog converter pin up to 12-bit resolution. This can act as a genuine analog output pin which means it's even more capable than PWM pins. The Renesas RA4M1 MCU also has an internal operational amplifier or op-amp that is exposed to the Uno R4 Minima through pins A1, A2, and A3, while the pins A4 and A5 are both connected to the same I2C bus marked with the pins SDA and SCL. In addition, these analog pins A0 to A5 can also be used as digital pins should you need more. Note that the reference voltage for all digital pins is 5 volts. The board has a total of 4 LEDs three of which are programmable. The LED built-in is the classic built-in LED attached to pin 13, and the receive and transmit LEDs. The fourth is the on-power LED, but this is not programmable. The UNO R4 Minima board features two separate hardware serial ports. One port is exposed via USB-C, and one is exposed via these RX and TX pins. Note that this is another distinction from Uno R3 to Uno R4. The Uno R3 only features one hardware serial port that is connected to both the USB port and the RX-TX pins on the board. In addition, the Uno R4 Minima has built-in support for HID or Human Interface Devices, a feature found on most modern-day development boards but not on previous Uno revisions. This means that the new Uno R4 board can act as a keyboard or mouse and send keystrokes or coordinates to your computer via native USB. There is a debugging option available using the SWD connector pins, giving advanced debug functionalities for more advanced users. 
Finally, the UNO R4 also has a built-in CAN module that complies with the CAN 2.0A and 2.0B standards. It is accessible through pins D4 and D5, CAN RX and CAN TX respectively. This CAN or Controller Area Network Bus allows you to minimize wiring for more efficient communication between different components of your project. To get started building your Arduino projects, first, you must download and install the Arduino IDE. If you are new to this, Arduino IDE is a programming software made for Arduino that lets you write programs and send them to the Arduino board. So, to install it, go to the official Arduino download page and choose either the latest IDE, at the time of this recording it is version 2.2, or the legacy IDE version 1.8. Note that you can install both versions if you want to. Arduino supports Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. So, download the necessary files according to your operating system. For example, Windows users can choose between an executable file, a Microsoft installer file, or a zip file. Any of these three are okay. The installation process is relatively simple. Once installed, you can simply launch the Arduino IDE. When you first open your Arduino IDE, it automatically installs the Arduino AVR boards, built-in libraries, and other required files. By default, your new Arduino Uno R4 Minima board is not yet installed. To install it, go to the Boards Manager and search for Uno R4. Look for the Arduino Uno R4 boards by Arduino and then click Install. Once done, you can now upload programs to your Uno R4 Minima. Your Arduino board usually comes with a USB cable. You can use it to connect your board to your computer. If properly connected, you should see the on power LED turn on. And by default, it is preloaded with a blinking program. Normally, Arduino boards are recognized automatically by your computer and assigned a port to it. You can verify this through your device manager, choose ports, and see if your new Uno R4 board is recognized. In your Arduino IDE, you can select your desired board from here. So we are looking for the Arduino Uno R4 Minima. Now, to test uploading a program to our board, go to File Menu, Examples, Basics, and choose Blink. This should open a new Arduino IDE window with a Blink that Eno sketch file on it. You can close the previous window if you want. If you're new to Arduino, a sketch is what Arduino calls its program. Arduino uses a variant of the C++ programming language. So if you're familiar with C++, then you can easily transition to writing Arduino sketches. We'll talk more about Arduino programming in the next video. For now, make sure that you have selected the correct board and port, and then click this icon here that says Upload. This should compile our sketch, and if there are no compile errors, a successful upload should follow. Now, you will not see any difference here because what we've just uploaded is the same default blinking program that turns on and off the built-in LED every second, that is 1000 milliseconds. Let's try changing this delay parameter to a different value. A smaller value means a faster time interval. I'll try 2000 milliseconds on and half a second off. I'll click the upload button again and we have a nice blinking LED. And there you have it, the first step in our Arduino journey. Remember, this series is a learning adventure, so don't hesitate to ask questions in the comment section. Please like and subscribe to Education is Life for more tech-related tutorial. I'll see you in the next lesson where we'll take our LED experiment to the next level. We'll talk more about Arduino programming and how to correctly build a circuit. So, happy coding!